Welcome to my channel where I try to break down accounting and tax topics to help small business owners, taxpayers, or anyone else who's just genuinely curious. I've already done a video on how to fill out a Schedule C. In that video, I went step by step in detail on each line on how to fill it out. That video will help you understand what goes on each line and why things look the way they do. In today's video, I'm actually going to cover how to enter the details in TurboTax for a fictitious business. Obviously, the first thing you do is you create an account or log in, and I've already done that and I'm at the main screen. So we'll go ahead and click Let's Go. It starts with asking a little bit of information about you and your taxes, like if you had a job, owned a property, etc. But we'll go ahead and just focus on owning a small business. Now it's going to ask if we're comfortable, and we are. So you have a few different options to get started in regards to filing your own taxes. You can start for free, or you can have assisted help for $219, or you can have TurboTax do your taxes for you. That would be $389. But we're going to go ahead and go with the base model and start for free and end up paying $139. Apparently TurboTax is glad that we're here, so we'll go ahead and click Let's Go. So now we start with the entering the most basic information, which is just going to be our name. And then our date of birth and then our zip code. Now it's asking how we did our taxes last year. We'll say that we did not file. And how we feel about doing them again, we're gonna say that we're good. Next is gonna ask about marital status and we'll go ahead and go with single. And we didn't have any children, dependents, or any of this information down here. So we'll go ahead and select continue. So now TurboTax wants to get a better idea of your financial picture to make sure that they offer the right forms, but in our case, we'll go ahead and skip all of them. Okay, so apparently we're off to a great start, so let's keep going. And it says money doesn't solve everything, but it helps, and I do agree with that. So now we're going to start with some more personal information. Okay, so let's just enter a social security number. And our occupation is going to be a landscaper. And we are not a member of the U.S. Armed Forces. And we're in Nevada, and we did not live in any other state, so we'll click no. And no one else can claim us on a tax return. We're not blind. Um, and we're not preparing this on somebody who's passed away. And we don't need to change the language that the IRS sends written communications on. So now it's asking us just to confirm our marital status as of December 31st. And we were single. And we don't have any children or we don't support anyone else. And then now we're going to enter a mailing address. And we'll go ahead and use the standard format or whatever, whatever they recommend. And it's asking, did we make money in any other state? In our case, we'll say, no, we did not. So TurboTax will then give a recommended filing status. Now you're not required to use the filing status, but based on your responses, TurboTax optimizes this to give you the best deduction. So we'll go ahead and select continue. And we'll just review our personal information. Everything looks good. The TurboTax will give you a couple of different options in regards to products that you can add on, like the base model that covers basic filing with encryption and providing guidance if you're audited or maybe if your identity is stolen. And then they have a full scale max defend and restore option that has a few more bells and whistles. In today's example, I'm just going to go with the base model, but feel free definitely to read through the different options to see if the max defend and restore option is better for your situation. But now TurboTax wants to get a better idea of some of your income and expenses. So we'll go ahead and say, let's get started. And we didn't receive any W-2s. We didn't have a job. Remember, our, our this is our own sole source of income. So we'll go ahead and select that. We didn't collect any rent or loyalty, royalties. Uh, we didn't collect any interest. Let's say we didn't get any distributions from a retirement plan. And we did, uh, let's just say that we did not qualify for any tax credits. And we don't have any foreign bank accounts. So now we're going to go ahead and get started with entering some income and expenses. So hit start. And it's asking, did we have any self-employment income? Were we an independent contractor? Did we do any on-demand services like Uber, Lyft, etc.? Most people don't realize when you start doing those services, you actually do have to fill out a business return. Or were we a small or home-based business and include sole proprietors? So we'll go ahead and say yes. There's a video that you can watch about self being self-employed, but we're going to go ahead and skip that for now. So now it's going to tell us about the type of work that we do. So in our case, again, we said we are a landscaper. And you're going to confirm. Now, depending on what business you say you choose, there may be more options down here. But in our case, it just has, yes, you work in landscaping or no, that's right. So we're going to go ahead and say, or excuse me, no, that's not right. So we'll go ahead and say, yes, we do work in landscaping. 
you may get asked to confirm how this business fits into your life. Like, is it your main source of income? Is it a side hustle? Is it your main business? And in our case, we're going to go ahead and say that it's our main source of income. So now they're going to ask if you started a business in 2021, if you stopped the business in 2021, or if you didn't start or stop and you're ongoing. In our case, we're going to go ahead and say that we started a business in 2021. And let's go ahead and pick a date of January 1st, 2021. So now, do we have any employees in 2021? No, we did not have any paid employees. So now Uncle Sam wants to know if you paid any subcontractors more than $600 during the year. So if you had workers who were not employees and you paid them more than $600, you would answer yes. If you're solo and it's you and your spouse are the only ones who worked in the business, then you would enter no. And in our case, we say no. Now we get to another question about active participation. Now the IRS is really big on whether you have an actual business or if you have a hobby. The IRS would obviously prefer for your business to be a hobby so that your expenses are limited. There are specific rules on what constitutes material participation and this doesn't have to be your main job and it doesn't have to be something that you do with a every waking moment. Check the rules to see if you meet any one of them and if you do you qualify. In this case it will say that the situation does not apply because we are going for or shooting for active participation. So now this is some of just the general information that we've entered. So we'll just review to make every, make sure everything looks fine. And we'll go ahead and say, yep, everything looks good. Some platforms offer a direct import if you use them like Squarespace. In today's example, we're just going to enter everything manually since our records were maintained in Excel. And I'm using Excel as an example because that's where most people start. I do, however, recommend getting into something like QuickBooks as quickly as you can because it will make your life easier as you start to expand and it helps with record keeping. So we're going to go ahead and skip this. Generally, if you run a business, you'll invoice clients out of whatever system you're in or you'll accept payment for services rendered. Either way, every time you make a sale, you'll collect on that sale, you'll track the revenue. Since you're more likely than not a startup, you'll probably be operating on a cash basis as opposed to accrual, meaning that sales and expenses are recorded when cash is constructively received or payment is actually made. There are rules about this and there are exceptions based on your business size, but generally most small businesses will operate under the cash basis model. So TurboTax is going to ask if you received any type of common sources of income, such as 1099 NEC, which is non employee compensation. You'd receive this if you were a sub subcontractor for someone else, or if you had other self-employed income such as 1099K, cash or checks. This is basically just the income that you'd get for services rendered. Then it asks about less common income like 1099 miscellaneous for miscellaneous payments, uh, import payments for payment processors, or any other type of income that such as like an award, interest, etc. In today's video, we didn't have anything but other self-employed income. And the reason being is that most people, when they start out, they will only have sales for services rendered or products sold. When entering sales, you don't have to enter every single sale line by line. That would be maintained in QuickBooks, Excel, or whatever else you're using. Today, we'll just say that we made $35,000 in cash sales. And we'll hit continue. Now, as a side note, TurboTax will give you a real time estimate of the taxes that you're due for the year or where you are for the year, if you're getting a refund or if you owe. Um, but don't panic on this number yet because we haven't gotten to the good stuff yet. So now we don't have any more self-employed income. All we had was a 35,000. So we'll say no. Next up is claiming your expenses. Now you can watch this video on claiming expenses, but I'm going to go ahead and skip this for now. The TurboTax has a lot of data and based on what business you said you run, they'll give you recommendations for your business. They'll show you how often, you know, ones are used, but you can also enter anything else that was ordinary and necessary for running your business. If we close the drop down, you can see that TurboTax already has recommended items and less common items segregated. So we'll open a drop down back up and then we can select the ones that we need. So we'll say startup cost. We'll say we had some assets. Let's go ahead and say we did supplies. We obviously had some advertising and we'll say some, uh, we'll say we had business insurance and we'll leave some of these. Uh, let's do vehicles because that's a big one as well. And that's it. So let's go ahead and close that down. So if we had some less common items, we could enter these here, but for our purposes, we're not going to do that. And then you can actually even download the full list of expenses if you wanted to see um, what was uh, what all options they have. So we don't necessarily need that. So we'll go ahead and close that. 
and then we'll click continue. So now TurboTax is going to actually review your selections and then they're going to come up with a few suggestions just to make sure that you don't miss out. Remember, you only pay taxes on your net income. So it's important to capture all of your expenses to avoid overpaying your tax bill. So we'll go through and review the ones that they recommend. So it says, did we pay any subcontractors? And no, we did not have any subcontractors. And let's just say we didn't rent any equipment. Let's say we purchased everything. We didn't have any repairs or maintenance. It's a brand new. Most of our stuff is new, so everything's running fine. And so we'll go ahead and click continue. So now we'll get started with entering some of the expenses. So the first one we're going to start out with is startup expenses. So we'll hit start. So it says, did we have any of these startup costs? So this is incurred before we actually went into business. So before we got into business, January 1st of last year, we obviously had some expenses. Let's just use, we'll say we had a couple, let's say we had accounting and maybe some pre-opening advertising expenses. So we'll say yes, that we had expenses. The first one that we're going to do is let's just say we had some accounting expenses and we'll say we had $500 of that date incurred. So let's just say it was back in November of 2020. And then we're going to add another startup cost. So now let's say we had some advertising expenses before we opened. Let's say we had 1500 and then we had date incurred. Let's say we had that. Um, maybe we did that in December. So now for startup costs, you obviously want to have them um, separated by category. So I already added the couple that we have, but based on how much you spent, you can actually deduct the amount in the current year, or you can actually amortize the amount over future years. Basically, that means that you can expense over a period of time. In today's video, we'll just take it all in year one, um, and then we're not going to amortize this out in future periods, but you can. Now, if you spend over $50,000 in startup costs and organizational costs, you're going to end up having to amortize that out over a certain period of time. In our case, we just had $2,000 total and we're going to run with it. All right. So again, as you can see, the running tally went down as far as federal tax due, because now we're getting credit for our startup costs that we deducted this year. Okay, so next we're going to go with vehicle. Now, vehicles can be a great tool for reducing expenses. You can write off mileage, actual expenses, or you can actually even take accelerated depreciation and potentially write off your entire vehicle. However, this category gets complicated very, very quickly, and people get themselves in trouble if they don't know what they're doing. The easiest and most simplest way to do this is to track your mileage. Now, you need to make sure you track all of your mileage, not just your business mileage. There are plenty of apps that can do this, so it can be extremely easy. Just make sure you're tracking business and personal mileage. So now first thing we're going to do is yes, we use the car for our landscaping work. So now here we're going to enter the vehicle details. So the type of vehicle you have dictates how much you can write off for depreciation or bonus depreciation. Just know that most vehicles under 6,000 pounds will be limited on the amount of depreciation you're allowed. However, if you're just starting out, you'll probably be using your own car or truck anyway, and you'll probably want to go with mileage for simplicity's sake. So now let's go ahead and just add our vehicle. Let's say we have a Ford F-150 for a truck. Let's just assume, let's just go with light truck just in case. The last question of when you started using your vehicle is important because you can only write off this expense while your business was in use. So if you started in mid-year, you can only start off writing expenses at mid-year. So we'll just go ahead and say that we started at the very beginning of, of last year. There are various rules on ownership, but today we'll say that we took a loan out when we bought the truck so we own it. The next questions relate to personal use of your vehicle. So now they just want to know that if this is your only vehicle, is it specifically for the business? And in our case, we'll say that yes, it was available for personal use and that we did have another vehicle for personal use. So now, did you keep track of the miles that you drove for landscaping work in your F-150? So we'll say that yes, that we tracked our miles. So now you may be asking yourself, if you didn't document your miles, what would you do? Well, you can estimate them. However, if you estimate them and the IRS comes in for an audit, you're going to have to prove that your estimate was reasonable and accurate. And if you know anything about the IRS, you know that anything you consider reasonable is likely not reasonable for them. Um, I would recommend immediately getting an app to track your miles so that if they come in, you can at least show them current mileage. And if it's fairly close, you'll probably be in better case. But again, in our case that we tracked our miles all year. So now you would enter the total mileage driven for the year. So let's, for example, say that we drove 20,231. Now this includes business miles and personal miles, commuting miles, etc. And then we're going to enter that we drove 11,256 miles for work. 
So now this question relates to were there four or more other vehicles used while you were using the F-150? So it's at any one given time, did you have more than five vehicles? In our case, no, we did not. But if you did, then you're limited and you would not be able to use the standard mileage. You would have to go with actual vehicle expenses. In our case, we're gonna go ahead and go with standard mileage. You're not required again to use the standard mileage. You can use the standard mileage. Now, in our case, the standard mileage deduction is $6,303. So if we spent more than that on fuel repairs, depreciation, you'd want to go that route. The standard mileage rate is easier to calculate, but it may not be the most optimal way to go. The general rule of thumb is if you drive a lot of mileage, then the mileage rate is probably going to be better. If you drive an expensive vehicle, but you don't drive a ton of miles, then maybe the actual expense might be better. Um, lots of repairs in a year actual expenses will probably be better. Um, so it's not necessarily a one size fits all selection. Just know that if you select an actual expense in the first year, you have to select that going forward. If you choose mileage, then you can maybe change to actual expenses at a later date. So, but today we're going to go with standard mileage to keep things simple. So in addition to standard mileage, you can also deduct things like parking, tolls, um, transportation um, for work, et cetera. So let's go ahead and say that we had uh, $500 in tolls, and let's say we had $125 in parking. So the vehicle deduction in total is going to give us for the mileage plus the expense the other additional expenses is going to be $6,928. Now, as you can see, the federal tax due has now dropped down to $4,973 because, again, we're only paying taxes on net income. We're not paying taxes on total income. So it says, do we want to claim another vehicle that we use for landscaping work? So this would be if we had maybe two vehicles or maybe three or maybe four, etc. So in our case, we did not. Now we'll move on to assets. Most expenses get expensed in the year that they are made. However, if you make large purchases, you can usually write them off over a period of years. In our case, we'd probably have things like a trailer, a lawnmower, blowers, etc., that would get written off over time. The IRS requires that items costing over $2,500 be capitalized, meaning that they would be expensed over time. However, there is also Section 179 depreciation and bonus depreciation that it can accelerate the expense into the year purchased. So now it says, did you buy or do you already own any depreciable assets related to this business? And we'll go ahead and say yes. Did you buy any items for business rental property that cost $2,500 or, or, or less in the year? So let's go ahead and say no, that way we can go ahead and start some capitalization. Did you make any improvements? We'll say no. And so what's gonna say, we're gonna describe this asset. So in our case, let's go ahead and start out. Let's say we bought an expensive lawnmower. And then we'll say that's going to be, it's not office furniture, it's not construction, um, it's not a trailer yet, because we're going to get to that. But we're going to go with a general purpose tool, machinery, or equipment. So now in this case, we'll say we bought a lawn more. And let's say we spent $4,500. And then we bought that, let's just say, on the beginning of the year to start cutting grass. OK, so now it's going to say, tell us a little more about this asset. So this is a first year business, so we're probably not trading in an asset. Um, we haven't sold it, retired it or destroyed it yet. Um, and obviously, so let's go ahead with that. We purchased it this year. And let's just say in this case, obviously, for it's a lawnmower that we specifically use this 100 percent of the time in the business. And then we'll say that we started using it on January 1st of 2021. And now it's asking how we want to deduct this item. So, again, when, since it's over $2,500, the IRS says you have to capitalize it. However, there are ways to get bonus depreciation, Section 179 depreciation, that just says that we can expense this right now if we want. In our case, we're going to go ahead and take the election and we're going to write things off this year. Now, if this is your first year and you don't have a lot of income, you may want to write them off over you know a period of years, or you may want to try to roll some of the excess depreciation to a following year. Again, it's not necessarily a one size fits all. It's about more tax planning and optimizing your situation. So I'm going to go ahead and take the election to take the deduction this year. So we're going to deduct that full $4,500. Okay. So the business asset so far. So the first one we had was a lawnmower. So now let's go ahead and add, let's just add one more. Let's say we add a trailer, which is also going to be under tools and machinery. And we'll go down to the bottom. We'll say it's a trailer. And we'll just say it's a trailer. I'm not sure how much trailers cost, but let's just put in $3,000. And let's just go ahead and say we bought this on the first of the year as well. And again, we purchased this asset. We didn't trade anything in. We've always used it 100% for business. And we started at the beginning of the year. 
So it's asking how we want to deduct the item. So it says we're going to take the full value of the deduction this year. So now we have our two assets. Again, you'd keep going depending on how many assets you had that were over, you know, $2,500. Anything under that, you can go ahead and put it in an appropriate category for expense for miscellaneous or supplies, et cetera. I'll go ahead and enter the next few expenses. They're a little less complicated than startup costs, vehicle costs, and assets, et cetera. Okay, now that we've got all of our expenses entered, um, we have our income down here. We have all of our expenses up here. Um, it's showing right now that with the expenses that we had, we had, again, we had $35,000 worth of revenue and actually we only owe $133 in federal tax due. And that is primarily because we had a lot of expenses. Obviously we had some startup costs. We had our vehicle expenses, which include uh, mileage and tolls, et cetera. We had our assets that we bought, which in this case would have been our lawnmower and our trailer. We had supplies that we bought throughout the year just to make sure we can do our job. And then we had some advertising costs of a thousand. And lastly, we had business insurance. So, total income less expenses is what you're taxed on and in that case we only owed 133 dollars so there are some uncommon situations if you've been in business for a while some carryovers limitations etc we don't have any of those and so we can click that we're done so it says now that we've lowered our taxable income we had income for work of thirty five thousand dollars we had expenses of twenty three thousand dollars taxable income is going to be eleven thousand five hundred seventy one dollars now because this is flowing through to your 1040 you're going to get a standard deduction for being single of a little over eleven thousand dollars so your taxable income is going to only really be taxed based on your tax rate and that's why we end up owing 133 dollars so now we'll go ahead and click continue so now it's asking how much of our landscape took place in the United States. We'll say all of it did. And then was any of your landscaping work for a former employer? And we'll say no. These are all new customers and new clients that we found. And then do we have deductions for landscaping that we'll claim elsewhere? It says no, we don't. And now TurboTax is going to go through and do its free checks. You would click to run your free check depending on what state you'd be in. You would have to uh, do your state tax return. But again, being in Nevada, we don't have that. Um, then you would go to the review tab, which would be some kind of review. You'd hit continue review and TurboTax would go through and see if there's anything that you potentially missed or anything that you would probably want to look at. Then we would move on to filing our actual taxes. So here you would actually, you know, review the order and then you'd pay TurboTax and their fees. Um, in step two, you'll set up the payment method if you owe the IRS or you'll set up your refund if you've overpaid. Um, a thing to note, if you owe the taxes and you can't pay them, just be sure to file before the deadline. You can work out a payment plans with the IRS, but the penalties for not filing can add up quickly. Now, once you pay TurboTax, you can download your 1040 and then you can see your Schedule C. However, if you want a summary right now, you would go into tools. You would go into tools again. You would go into view tax summary. Now this is gonna give you an overall tax summary. So we had total income, which is again was your gross income, which was your sales, less all of your expenses. Um, some adjustments to income is gonna be the reduction for part of your self-employment tax. So your total adjusted gross income is $10,754. So your itemized standard deduction is gonna be $12,550. And then you had your other taxes. So the total tax is gonna be $1,635, less the total payments of $1,502. So you'd have a total balance due of one hundred and thirty three dollars. Now you can preview um, the schedules and some worksheets related to your 1040 before you pay. So you can scroll through these if you want. So now if you want to go back to your taxes, you can go back here. Um, you can make any adjustments as needed. So now let's just say you've, you've done all that, but now you have actually two businesses because, again, you can only maintain or only keep one business on a Schedule C. What you would do is you would go back to federal. You would go to uh, edit or add for self-employment income. Here you have your landscaping business. Now, if you wanted to add another line of work, all you would do is you would click add another line of work. They give you the same videos that we skipped last time. And then you would start the whole process again for the new business. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.